Okay, uh, so we are doing chapter eight. Chapter eight is about uh, property, plant, and equipment. These are the long-term asset, okay? So that's the chapter eight. Um, so uh, before I start, you know, we are going to take a, a euro order here. Um, I want, there's lots of things to cover. So just in case we are running out of time, I want to cover something that you have never learned before, okay? So this is about uh, the non-monetary transaction, okay? I want to start with this because you, you have never learned this before. Uh, it deserves more time, okay? And right now, um, you have more energy, right, at the start of this lecture. And so we should focus on the important things that you haven't learned before. Okay, so non-monetary transactions. So, uh, you know, the two parties in the normal business transactions, it's easier when you say, oh, I spend $1,000, right, to purchase a piece of equipment. So then you debit your equipment for 1000 right? Uh, that's your, uh, your, your PPE, right? That's your property plant equipment. So you debit, um, you know, equipment for $1,000, right? But uh, in the uh, transactions, there are often, not often, it happened that sometimes uh, there are some non-monetary exchange involved. So for example, right? Uh, you trade in an old car for a new car, right? So you give, you give, you uh, trade in uh, your old truck, okay? And then you give the real, uh, the, you give the uh, realtor maybe uh, $10,000 and then you exchange for a new car, right, a new truck. So in that case, it's not purely a monetary transaction because the old truck, okay, is non-monetary. So we call this, we consider this as a non-monetary transaction, okay? So I'm just, just to illustrate the transactions. So I'm using two examples, okay? So suppose the uh, Joe's kitchen, the Joe's kitchen, um, is, um, is getting a land, okay, getting a land, a piece of land from Donald Engineering, okay, from Donald Engineering. Um, and there's a reason why I put a red on this side and the blue on this side, okay. Um, so the uh, equipment, okay, so Joe, okay, gave equipment, okay, and a thousand dollars cash to Donald, and Donald in exchange gave a land to Joe. Okay, so that's this transaction, and it is non-monetary transaction because the equipment is involved, right? It's not just purely cash here; the equipment is also involved, right? So, for Joe in Joe's book, okay, in Joe's book, Joe is going to receive a land, right? So then, what's the general entry would be? When you receive a land, what's your general entry? You debit land, right? You debit land. The question is, for how much, right? For how much? It's easier if you say, I purchased a land for $1 million, so then debit land for $1 million. But in this case, there are non-monetary items involved. So what are you gonna do with this, right? What are we gonna do with this? So this is a, the, the, the scenario that uh, we, need, we are learning here. Uh, so a, IAS 16 and ISB provide guidance in terms of how we're gonna deal with this situation, okay? Okay, oops. So um, when we talk about transaction, uh, we would say this transaction have commercial, tra commercial substance, okay? If, if the assets exchanged are significantly different in terms of the risk, timing, or amount of cash flow, or the value of the entity's operation significantly changes as a result of transaction, okay? So a transaction could, be, could have a commercial substance, okay? Some other transactions may not have commercial substance. Okay, this topic is very important. 
uh, in spring term, uh, there's one question in the final exams. I was asking this question, okay? Uh, I loaded, I loaded the, the uh, final one version of the final exams on the Moodle website, okay? So if you want to see, give yourself an idea what the uh, final exams questions looks like, uh, take a look at the, the sample uh, final exams I posted on the Moodle website, okay? So this is an important topic. I want you to um, pay attention to this. So what do you mean by commercial substance? If your configurations of the cash flow changed, okay, in terms of the amount of the risk, the timing, right, and the amount of cash flows, okay? If these eyesights you exchanged, okay, they have different configurations of the cash flow. That means this is, has a commercial substance, okay? Uh, or, or, uh, this change, this exchange, okay, is gonna affect the entity's operation, okay? So that's the two, uh, two things you can use to make a judgment whether a transaction have a commercial substance, okay? So now, suppose, suppose you exchange a dog for a cat, okay? <laughs> so do you think you have a, a, a commercial substance here? No. No? Why? Because it's not materially significant. Okay. Um, so you mean that uh, the cash flow, maybe the cash flow in terms of risk, timing or amount of cash flows? Maybe, uh, you know, if you have a little dog, right, versus a little cat, they, doesn't, they probably consume the same amount of food, right? The amount of the cash outflows for uh, purchasing the the, the, the food, the, the pet food would be the same, right? Um, you know, so maybe in terms of the cash flows configurations, uh, there is no difference, right? How about the operations for the entity? Okay, so you, you it, before you have to walk a dog every day, right? It's a lot of work for you. <laughs> Okay, you have to walk dog every day. Lots of work, okay? <laughs> now you have a cat, okay? Good for you. You don't have to walk the cat, right? Cats can just be happy on their own. And in fact, there are being two, uh, <laughs> there are being two, uh, uh, what's the word? They don't even bother to please you, right? You know, for dog, you get a lot of pleasure from playing with dog, right? Um, so they try to please you, right? They waggle their, their tails, right? Uh, but for cat, they come to you for food, right? Other time, they're okay. They will, <laughs> they will be just on their own, right? Um, so in terms of your operations, okay, um, there's less work. You don't have to walk dog, right? Every day, right? A couple of times a day, right? So it's gonna significantly affect your operation, right? So this is, would be considered as a commercial, um, Substance, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I personally like prefer dog over <laughs> over. <laughs> I like that. I, I like dog better. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, cat. They are kind of cute as well. Um, so now tell me the transactions between Joe and Donald. Okay. Is this a commercial, does this transaction have commercial substance? I'd say yes. Yes, why? Because the exchange of the equipment, um, so ultimately there is a, a significant difference in the terms of the risk in the sense of the equipment does a depreciation value uh, depreciates and uh, land does not depreciate. Dep yeah, it doesn't depreciate. Mm -hmm. and, it, um, and also uh, the cash flow. So equipment tends to be an asset and it, it, it brings in cash flow. Uh, sorry, yeah, it brings in profits in part of the operations of the company. Whereas land, um, you have to build something on it and it gets still part of the operations, but not really. Yeah. 
Very good. So for equipment, maybe uh, the equipment help you generate profits, right? Uh, for land, if it's a vacant land that is not used, uh, you have to pay the property tax. So you have to you generate cash outflows, right? Um, so the cash configurations definitely didn't look the same, right? Not even similar, right? Right. Okay, so this has a commercial substance. Okay, so um, it's important. Okay, the first thing you want to be able to do is you want to first make a judgment whether this transaction has commercial substance or not. Uh, so if you have a, a piece of land A and you are exchanging for a piece uh, of land B, right? So then, you know, maybe there is no commercial substance. So you, you exchange one land for another land, right? So maybe there's no commercial substance, right? Okay. If the uh, cash configurations remain similar, right? Uh, but for equipment for land, you can imagine, right? The cash flows will be different, right? Okay, so this has commercial substance, okay? Uh, so now, okay, now, what is the um, recognition of the value? So for in Joe's Kitchen's company, they purchase land. How much value are they gonna recognize for the land, okay? There are potential candidates. Fair value of the land, 100,000. Uh, maybe the cost, Donald, when Donald purchased the land, cost Donald 50,000, okay? Right now, the fair value in the market is 100,000. Those are the potentials, potentials, right? And then for the, uh, the other side, the ISIS gave up, okay? The ISIS gave up is cash, 1,000. There's no problem here. For equipment, uh, again, the, ca the fair value could be a candidate, 95%, sorry, 95,000. Uh, the cost when Joe purchased the equipment, 120,000, okay? And uh, the accumulative depreciation is 30,000, right? Those are the, the informations here. So, so which number are we gonna use for the land, right? <laughs> so that's kind of interesting question here. So we have a we have a, um, a solution here. If this is a commercial substance, if this transaction have commercial substance, okay. So you are going to use the fair value of the asset give up or the asset received, whichever one is more reliable, okay. So you have two fair values. Okay, one is for land, the other one is for equipment. You, got, you are going to use whichever one is more reliable, okay? If, if they both reliable, we are going to use the fair value of the asset gave up, which is the equipment, okay? Remember, we are talking about the Joe's kitchen, right? Joe's kitchen gave up equipment to receive land. Okay, so we are going for the asset given up, that is the equipment for Joe, right? So we are going to go with the fair, this fair value, okay? Uh, if there's no commercial substance, okay, or the fair value cannot be measured reliably, then you go with the net book value of the asset give up, okay? So this is the equipment, the net book value is the cost minus cumulative depreciation, which is 120 minus 30, 90,000. That's the net book value of the equipment, okay? And that is the, that is the, uh, 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 the net book value for the asset given up. You are going to use that, okay? You are going to use that. So let's take a look, let's take a look. So what is the value of the land uh, on the book of Joe's kitchen, okay? If the fair value of equipment is more than or equally reliable to the uh, fair value of land, which one are we gonna use? Which 100, fair value? 100,000. Hmm? Land. Land? For the land. Okay, so use the equipment. Use the equipment. Why? 
um, because one of the rules was saying that um, it's what you're giving up, basically. Okay, good. Yeah. So whichever one is more reliable. Um, so if the fair value of equipment is more reliable than land, you go with the equipment. If they are equally reliable, you go with the eyesight given up. In this case, we are talking about Joe, Joe's kitchen, that's the equipment. So, so your land value would equal to equipment plus cash, right? So your equipment fair value is 95,000 plus 1,000. So your land value is 96,000. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, now, if the fair value of equipment is less reliable, if the land's value, fair value is more reliable, which one we are going with? Land. Land. Mm -hmm. So land value is 100,000, right? Fair value. Okay. Now, so we are talking about, this is has commercial substance. What if there's no commercial substance? If there's no commercial substance, we are going with the net book value of the asset given up, right? So land equals equipment plus cash, and you use the net book value of the equipment plus cash. So net book value equals cost minus cumulative depreciation. So that's 120 minus 30, 90 plus 1,000. So your land is 91,000, okay? Did I make this clear? This is very important. Like I said, in, in the spring term, I asked questions. In the questions, I was asking them, students, to figure out under the condition of commercial substance, what's your general entry is like, okay? And what's your general entry is like under the no commercial substance, okay? So I want to test you to see if you really understand, okay? Now I'm asking you this question. Uh, DEF received a parcel of undeveloped land from another company in exchange for 45,000 cash and a second-hand uh, forklift used in production. The fair values of the forklift and land have both been reliable measured. So both of them have been reliably measured. So the details information is the cost of the forklift DEF paid is 50,000. Cumulative, depre cumulative depreciation is 12,000. Fair value for the for forklift is 42,000. Fair market value for the land is 88,000. Cash paid is 45,000. First question, does this transaction appear to have commercial substance? I think so, yeah, because the... Um... Yeah, you're right, Andrew. Uh, now you muted yourself. Yeah, the, uh, if the forklift is used in production especially, right? Like if it was um, kind of a more of an overhead thing, maybe not, but. Mm -hmm. So the, the forklift is a, a tool, right? A equipment, right? And uh, undeveloped land, right? Undeveloped land, you are not receiving any cash flows. Right? And developed, you can use the land. Instead of that, you are paying property tax on the land, right? So cash outflows for undeveloped land. But for the uh, forklift used in production, right? You are generating re uh, revenues, right? By using the tool. So you can see one is cash inflow, the other one is cash outflow. So from that, you know this has commercial substance. Okay, tell me then, um, what is the uh, general entry I should make? I need a debit land, right? I need a debit undeveloped land. How much I should debit land? Should it be the value of the forklift? Okay, which is? 42,000. So I debit land for 40, 42,000? Yeah. Well, you give up the, the forklift, right? What else you give up? 
for the land. 45,000 oh, 45, in cash. Yeah. Very good. So, so 87. Gonna, yeah, 87, right? 87. Very good. So you debit land for 87, right? What do you credit? Equipment for 42 and cash for 45. Okay, so you credit cash for 45, right? That's how much you paid. And you gave up, you gave up the forklift. You have to close any account related to the forklift, right? So you dispose the for forklift, right? Yeah. So you debit what? Uh, accumulated depreciation. For 12,000? Yeah. And you credit? The uh, forklift for 42. Uh, the, for the cost is not 42. Or 30,000, 30, sorry. Uh, 50, right? 50. The historical oh. cost of the forklift, right? That's the cost on your book is 50, right? Okay, yeah, I see that. Okay, so here's my entry. If this transaction has commercial substance, if the answer is yes, you are going to debit the land, right? 87,000, right? And you're gonna debit, you're gonna close because you gave up forklift. So you should not have any accounts related to the forklift. So you're gonna close cumulative depreciation by debit 12,000. And you are going to also close the cost account by credit forklift for 50,000. And you pay the cash, you credit cash for 45,000. So my total debit is 99,000. And my total credit is 95,000. So I need additional 4,000 credit. And that is my gain on the disposal. Okay, so I credit gain on the disposal. So when, the, when this is the commercial substance, it's very likely you are going to have a gain or loss, okay? Does this make sense, this journal entry? Make sure you understand because, like I said, in the spring term, there are, in the final exams, there's a question like this. Sorry, I have a question. Um, I, I didn't catch the 87,000. Where did that, how did you get the 87,000 in land? Yeah, uh, in this case, uh, they, are, they are saying the fair value for forklift and uh, the land are both mm -hmm. measured reliably, okay? So therefore, we are going with the eyesight given up, right? Right, which is which the forklift. Is the forklift. So the fair value of the forklift is 42,000, and plus the cash you paid, 45,000. Oh, 87,000, okay. Yeah, that's okay. the 87,000, yeah? Okay, Does that make sense? thank you. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. So make sure you understand this journal entry because um, it's important. Anyone else have a question? Sorry, where was the gain from again? Uh, so you are making the, the gain or loss. That's your last step, okay? So yeah. you first make this entry, then you calculate what's your total debit. Your total debit is 99, right? Mm -hmm. 87 plus 12. And then you calculate your total credit, which is 95, right? Yeah. And then you need additional 4 uh, to make it balance, right? So that's what, therefore you credit for. So when you credit, that's a gain, right? When you make a credit, that's a gain. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah? got it. If you, if you have to make a, a debit to make it balanced, that means you have a loss, right? Yeah, that's loss, yeah. Yeah, okay. With no. the gain, Yeah. would you also be able to find the gain from taking your historical value and taking off the accumulated depreciation and then that being the difference between the fair market and the historical after depreciation? Um, you, you probably can. So mathematically, it's all these five numbers, right? Mathematically, yeah, it, it's these five numbers. It's just whatever um, the difference is, is easier. Yeah, so whichever way you are comfortable, okay? Do, but don't confuse yourself. Okay. Um, for me, the easier way is I will leave the gain or loss in the end, right? I'm just calculating what's my total debit and what's my total credit. And then the gain or loss is just the failure, right? It's just the failure. Yeah. yeah. That's the way how I see it. But if you feel, you are better in a different perspective, right? That's fine, but it has to be from this, these four numbers, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the most straightforward way I get that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you, you are right. Maybe yeah, there are some, some other thinking process to get this number, that's okay. Um, but 
maybe what's, you know, to me, this is an easier way to think about it. Yeah. So anyone else have question? Can I move on? Yes? Yep. yep okay. Thank you. Okay, if there's no commercial substance, okay? If there, suppose, I, assuming, okay? Assuming this, there's no commercial substance in this scenario, okay? Then what is my, how much I should debit land? Eighty-eight thousand. Eighty-eight thousand. So I'm going with the fair value of the land. Oh, sorry. You want the full uh, journal entries? No, I'm just asking for now. Let's go one step, one step. What is the amount of land I should recognize? I should debit. Eighty-eight thousand. Eighty-three. Eighty-three. Why eighty-three? Eighty-three thousand. Yeah, that would be um, the historical cost. Take off the accumulated depreciation and then plus the cash paid. Yeah, when there is, this is important, very good. This is important to know when there is no commercial substance, you go with the net book value of the asset given up, okay? So the asset given up is the forklift. The net book value is the difference between cost and accumulated depreciation, which is a 38,000, 15 minus 12, that's the 38. And plus the cash, 45. That's your 83. That's your 83. So then you debit cumulative depreciation, 12,000. You credit the cost, 50,000. You credit cash, 45,000. And in this way, there's no gain or loss. Okay. So remember, when there's no commercial substance, that transaction should not have any gain or loss. Okay. When, I, I will say this again. Okay. When there is no commercial substance, okay, there is no gain or loss, right? Only when you do business, if I only do a commercial activity, you make money or you lose money, right? You have a gain or loss. But here we are saying there is no commercial substance. That means you are, you are not doing a business. You are not making a commercial activity. So you should not expect any gain or loss, okay? So in the exam, you know, I'm not expecting anyone to have a gain or loss under the no substance circumstance, right? Does this make sense? So yeah. the Go fair ahead. market value of the land is like a trick extra information then we would cross it out when we do for commercial substance yes or commercial substance no? Uh, not really. It's not a, yeah, it's not a trick information. Remember, if if you can measure land more reliably than the equipment, we are going to we are going with the land. Okay. Fair value. So in this case, they measured equipment and land with equal uh, reliability, right? And then the the standard suggests us to use the eyesight given mm -hmm. up, right? But if we have a more, if the land value fair value has more reliability, okay, is more reliable than the equip the forklift, then we have to use the uh, fair value of the land. That means I have to debit land for, uh, what is that, 88,000. That means I will have a gain of 5,000, okay? So it's really depending on the scenario. Does Thanks. that make sense, Alina? Thank you. Okay. This is important. Um, if you want more practice, uh, take a look at that uh, question I used for uh, spring final exam, okay? There's one question and I also give you the answer, okay? Make sure you understand it, okay? So can I move on? Yes? Okay. Okay, um, okay. so now it's good. This is the new things you learned today and this is important right so i i decided to do this earlier so you have you have a energy you know you you are paying attention okay so let's let's now go back to the beginning okay by the way did anyone pick up my my uh, joy humor here 
Joe Kitchen and uh, Donald Engineering, and the red and the blue things here. No. No. Wow. I sorry. I I got I, it. I liked it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I don't think as an instructor I'm allowed to talk um, talk about too much about the politics, right? Um, so <laughs> this is the way how I unleash my feeling. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, so let's so it's good. Now we covered the most important topic uh, of this chapter. Now I'm gonna stop. Okay, stop recording.